Okay, so we're back at the shop. We're now going to build a pilaster, okay? Now, a pilaster is basically a square column. It usually is engaged in the wall, as it was at the stop house. And in this case, our column is fluted. Now, fluting is one of those tricks of the eye that makes something appear lighter than it really is. The other thing that's happening is Staub is playing with the classical system. In the canon, typically what happens is you have an abacus at the top, which is the block that kind of supports the column before the beam, and then you have an echnus, and then you have some moldings and a neck, which is what's happening here. This is called the neck, okay? And then you've got an astragal here. He does that, but he's playing with the shapes of these moldings that aren't purely canonical. He also he does the same thing in the base, right? And so our base um, has a plinth, and then it has this shaped molding for the kind of the where the torus would go. And he's kind of played around with things. Now, this is a nice kind of semblance because it gives you a picture of what this pilaster really is, right? It's, it's a block. Um, this is the back side of it. It looks much heavier and thicker than it is. But when we make these, we're actually make them in three pieces of wood that are then mitered together, and then our base is put on. So you're seeing the plinth, you're seeing the molding, and then of course our, our fluted pilaster. The capital of the top, which looks like this, right, which is which are those moldings here, are made up of three moldings, okay? So we have the abacus at the top, which looks more like an echnus, and then the moldings underneath. Those three moldings put together create our capital. And then you have the neck, and then you have the astragal underneath, which is this molding. So there's our three moldings, there's the neck in the middle, and then the shaft runs down here. Now, the way we make our shaft, right, we cut our fluting into the shaft and we stop our fluting, okay? This is where the neck, the astragal fits in, right? It fits in right there. And then our capital fits right at the top, okay? I've seen it where they run the flute right through the middle, and that just doesn't look as good. It looks better when it stops. Remember that there's a proportional relationship between the size of the flute and the, and the, the shoulder in between. And so if it gets too wide, it looks like you ran out of money and time and didn't want to do it right, right? There should be a proportional number of flutes and a correct width of the shoulder here to make this column look right. This is how we put it together. Of course, these pe then three, three pieces are just mitered together, right, at the corners, and then it engages the wall. This then gives a very strong supportive element that those arches come down on, right? Now, they are not structural, but they are visually structural. Part of the whole classical system is that it communicates support. When you stand in an opening like that and there's strong pilasters either side and a pretty arch, it draws you through there. It's kind of the beauty of the system. So, in conclusion, because he understands the rules of the classical system, he is now be able to take the language and play with it, right? Really do some poetry, play around with this colonial revival era. It's looking at all three, the Georgian, Federal, and Greek revival, and going, I really like that element, I like that element, let's draw them together and make them work. And Staub did it in a wonderful way.